Marvel's Eternals is upon us, and you'd think it would receive a proverbial standing ovation from a unified choir of professional critics. However, it's becoming increasingly clear from review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes that it will receive no such thing, as it's hovering right around the threshold between fresh and rotten. Given how diverse and inclusive the Eternals prides itself on being, that should not have been possible, but here we are, the professional critics appear to have abandoned Marvel. Worse yet, the highly influential Forbes magazine is, in a roundabout way, outright mocking the movie on the eve of its release. For Kevin Feige, this could not have come at the worst time, as his future with Marvel and Disney is no longer as secure as it once was. A few outlets are running cover for the movie, claiming it's being review bombed by bigoted and backwards fans. But this is a mere deflection, which doesn't affect the real issue. The media doesn't have the Eternals back. In this editorial, I will begin by establishing why review bombing isn't the problem here. Then I'll go through what the preliminary consensus among professional reviewers actually suggests about the movie and what this in turn might mean for the power struggle within Disney and Marvel. Ever since Josh Trank's Fantastic Four, the usual way of running cover for misguided movies that happens to have diversity and inclusion in them, is disregarding the real source of complaint, but then highlight the diversity and inclusion aspects of the movie in a straw man deflection, and then accuse anyone critical of being evil and backwards bigots. There has been some of that in the case of The Eternals too, but not nearly as much as you'd expect. By and large, this kind of deflection has so far been restricted to occasional accusations of review bombing, which caused one of the stars to tweet out of turn, and he quickly deleted that tweet. To briefly address that, this so-called review bombing is so far a few hundred people that haven't seen the movie giving it one-star reviews on the IMDb, which have since been deleted. As far as review bombing goes, that's pretty mundane. But those accusations are just a deflection from the real issue, which is that professional reviewers in the entertainment media complex aren't getting behind it. And the Rotten Tomatoes critic score can't be review bombed. The embargo on full reviews has lifted only recently, but social media reactions were allowed ever since October 18th. Already in our video of October 21st, we pointed out that those early reactions, however positive they may have appeared, suggested that the movie really wasn't looking all that. The now released full reviews bear that out, as the general trend is that the movie is universally praised for its diversity and inclusion, and for nothing else. By that I mean, some reviews may like the cast, other reviews may like an aspect or two of the story, but diversity and inclusion are the only recurring positives. Worse yet, as more and more reviews are released, they are becoming increasingly negative towards everything else, including Chloe Zhao's capabilities as a director. At the time of making this video, the critic consensus, which is subject to change as more reviews come in, reads, an ambitious superhero epic that soars slightly more often than it strains, Eternals takes the MCU in intriguing and occasionally confounding new directions. That's not a positive consensus. On the contrary, it's a negative consensus. Let's read it again, only this time without the must not insult Marvel filter. Ambitious is code for that it tries and fails. That it soars slightly more than it strains is another way of saying that way too many times it falls flat on its face. Intriguing and occasionally confounding new directions is a diplomatic way of saying the Eternals takes the MCU in nonsensical and all too frequently in ill-advised new directions. What they're really saying is that were it not for the diversity and inclusion which the entertainment media complex rates so highly, the Eternals would be deep down in certified rotten territory, 
and it may still get there, for it appears quite a few reviewers considers it a complete dud, and that does not bode well for how the general audience will take to it. No one asked for an Eternals movie, which doesn't have to be a problem. No one asked for Guardians of the Galaxy either, yet the moment the first trailer for that movie dropped, audiences were on board with it, as the trailer for it clearly conveyed everyone going was in for a good time. Not so with the Eternals. Ever since it was announced, its only real selling points have been how diverse and inclusive it was going to be. Full stop. Beyond that, the only promise given by the trailers was a cloudy and dreary movie with too many characters. So why did Kevin Feige greenlight this? What reason do moviegoers have to go see this? Fans of the original comics have no reason to go, for as we already established in an earlier video, this movie sidelines creator Jack Kirby. Instead, director Chloe Zhao was inspired by the visual style of Denis Villeneuve. But why go see this poor man's Dune when you can go see the real thing instead, right now? The derision and ridicule of the Eternals is such that even Forbes magazine decided to join in on the fun in an October 31st piece titled, Why is it so hard to get hyped up for Marvel's Eternals? The article reads, Eternals is set to flesh out the deep mythology of the MCU, introducing new characters with powers that exceed many of the Avengers, facing an existential threat beyond anything Marvel's heroes have experienced before. So, why is the online hype being overshadowed by mockery? Plot twists and scenes from the film are being memed before the film's release. Early leaks, along with a mixed critical reception, has resulted in the film being digested by the Twitter sphere early. The article then proceeds to show a number of screenshots of fans on Twitter mocking Marvel's Eternals. Here, I feel it should be emphasized that Forbes' readership consists of financial types and bankers, you know, working professionals and investors, Disney investors, that don't necessarily spend their time on Twitter. Chances are, they might not have seen how the movie is being ridiculed and derided by fans, were it not shown to them by Forbes magazine. So now they know. Forbes does one better even adding another reason why there's no reason to see this movie. After establishing that the movie is sizing up to be a potential misfire for Marvel, the article reads, The studio hyped the film up as an important piece of world building, a sizable piece of the MCU's ever-expanding puzzle. Are we going to need to watch Eternals to understand the upcoming slate of Marvel films and television shows? That's a good question, and Forbes proceeds to answer it. Meh, probably not. That's not me saying that, that's Forbes, I'm quoting them. Meh, probably not. The article elaborates. Marvel movies are designed to be accessible to kids, newcomers, and non-committal fans. You don't need to know the exact storyline of these movies to enjoy the next world-ending threat. Most of the lore amounts to easter eggs, an occasional in-joke, and planting seeds for future hype cycle. So that's Forbes magazine telling its viewers you can safely skip this movie. It then proceeds to lambast several earlier MCU movies. If the Eternals should underperform upon release, this article is going to be extremely damaging to Kevin Feige. On October 27th, we released a video titled Indiana Jones Pushed Back a Year to 2023, the corporate Game of Thrones behind the delay. In many ways, that video is about new CEO Bob Chapek's takeover of Disney, which we have been covering with writer, producer, and former journalist Kamran Pasha. It's a takeover that has not been easy and required a great deal of 4D chess, as Chapek is going up against a very powerful establishment. Among them, Marvel's Kevin Feige. But articles like this Forbes piece suggest that Chapek is winning, and that Kevin Feige is under increasing pressure. In order for him to continue in his current position at Marvel, let alone continue his preferred direction for the MCU, he's going to have to continue delivering Marvel cash to Disney's bottom line. 
If Eternals fails to do that, there is no blaming the fans on this one. Forbes has just let all of Disney's investor know whose faults it really would be. We shall continue to keep you up to date with both how the Eternals performs, as well as the corporate machinations behind the scenes of Disney and Marvel. Make sure to subscribe and indicate you want notifications on all videos to ensure you don't miss out on future updates. For now though, let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments.